Now to the Ontario Legislature. Question period is underway. Let's listen in. Fever, vomiting and had low oxygen levels. Speaker, our youngest children are sick and suffering because this government didn't do enough to prepare for this crisis. I asked the Premier, how many more kids will have to wait long hours for care before this government takes action to relieve the burden on hospitals and ensure our kids get the care that they need? The Deputy Premier and Minister of Health. Thank you, Speaker. You know, it is obviously deeply disturbing for all of us to hear stories about parents who have to wait with their children as they get admitted, as they are waiting for that bed to open up in the hospitals. But I also think it's important for us to understand and appreciate that these are not new issues and not new problems. We were left, frankly, with a health system that was in dire need of investments. Our government has made those investments. We continue to make those investments. We are the first government since the last previous Conservative government to open up two new medical schools in the province of Ontario. We will continue to do what is right and what is needed. But yes, I do find it disturbing when we hear stories about how parents have to wait for that bed to become available Spots. and the child to ultimately be in, an, in a uh, hospital room. Thank you. A supplementary question, the member for London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker, again to the Premier. We also heard yesterday that Children's Hospital at London Health Sciences Centre announced the heartbreaking decision to cancel surgeries for sick children. Inpatient bed occupancy is higher than any other time during the pandemic, despite the hospital's efforts to expand capacity and to move children to the adult ICU. The Director of Pediatric Critical Care says the crisis is getting worse every day, and they don't know how long the cancellations will last. Speaker, we've been hearing that this government has a plan for the crisis in our, in our pediatric hospitals. How can the Premier possibly defend a plan that causes sick children and their families to suffer? Thank you, Speaker. I've said it before and I will say it again. Status quo isn't working. We have put in place with our partners, including Ontario Health, constant contact with pediatric hospitals, Ontario Health, primary care pr practitioners, um, community health centres, to make sure that everyone is working at full capacity so that we have access to the, the care we need. I understand this is very challenging when we see these surges, when we see increases in viruses such as RSV, when we see increases in influenza. What I would ask respectfully is that all of us make sure we are part of the solution by encouraging our constituents to get that flu vaccine. If you haven't yet received your booster shot for COVID-19, do it. That will make a difference Response. in our hospitals, in our primary care uh, facilities, and ultimately protect our children. Thank you. The final supplementary, number two on the mark. Uh, speaker, one of the sick children who is suffering is a two-year-old girl diagnosed with tuberous sclerosis complex 2 at the age of six months. She experiences up to five seizures a day, which could delay her development. Her parents have been waiting since April for a five-day, four-night-long EEG at London's Children's Hospital to determine the best treatment options. The procedure was finally scheduled uh, for last week, but her parents have now been told that it will be postponed in indefinitely. Speaker, this government's so-called plan is devastating for families like my constituents. Why did the Premier fail to provide the supports and resources needed by Children's Hospital and other pediatric hospitals to prevent surgeries and procedures from being cancelled? Minister Help. Speaker, we did and we are. Now, we prepared for this, this uh, surge. We understood, we worked with Ontario Health to make sure that all pediatric and, in fact, all hospitals had plans in place for a surge that could have come in the fall session. We are now seeing that. As I said, our best defense is to make sure that people get that flu vaccine, that we have uh, sufficient um, investments in place at pediatric hospitals, and frankly, in 
community hospitals. You know, I want to highlight some of the uh, partnerships that have happened. We often talk about the highly skilled, exceptional workers that are in our pediatric hospitals, but we also have highly skilled, caring, compassionate uh, healthcare workers in our community hospitals. And now we have partnerships where sick kids Response. nurses are training community hospital nurses on what to expect and how to deal with patients with, for example, RSB. It's working. We will continue to do that work. Next question, leaving the opposition. We've been listening to Question Period down at the Ontario Legislature. Lots of discussions regarding health care and the ongoing situation regarding a lot of the sickness that's going around.